Welcome back everyone to the HWBOT World Series 2016 for Amateur. Right now we will have a second semi-final for the people that didn't know about to overclock the Broadwell eCPU, the latest Intel Core i7 6950X CPU. Uh, this CPU just came out last Tuesday and today we will have two new Amateur. Uh, We'll have two new amateurs that will be uh, competing to get this one out. Uh, my dear Ligoft, we will uh, go and directly to the uh, match with our judge, Ed Judge Christian Ney on the stage. We start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good luck. So indeed, uh, guys, again, the same question on Twitch. What are we watching? Yeah, indeed, you're watching uh, overclocking. So pushing your hardware, the current hardware. At this time, we're only focusing on the processor, the brand new Broadwell E Intel i7 6950X CPU, like Truthman said, just launched like four days ago. To the grand audience and fans, this is Intel's highest performance desktop CPU, in fact. They have uh, CPUs. That's, the, that's, that, that's uh, to put it easy, that's the fastest CPU you can get on the market today. But some people, when, when we're talking to people like on Twitch, they think fast and only related to megahertz. But that's the thing that has changed like over the last years. Huh? It's, it's more cores, so you can do more things at the same time, stream, game, download, whatever it is. So you can even divide like, let's say, two cores to, to, to streaming, six cores to gaming, two cores to this, because you have a total 10 cores available, which is like insane for desktop users. Right now on the screen we have uh, Chia and Jimmy Lin, they are both competing to see who will uh, get to the final to go against the previous winner of the semi-final. So indeed you're, you're watching overclocking and they're doing overclocking from inside the operating system. So we're using uh, Windows 10 and they're using for that Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, which is an application, a stress benching tool, if you can call it like that. And, and you see as well on the tab on the left, you can dial in like a lot of different variables. You have a processor speed build up of two values, the CPU multiplier, which is unlocked on these high end uh, CPUs from Intel or the case queues for the mainstream e, models. 2816. 2816 already from uh, Jimmy Lin. So that's a score indeed that we saw pop up uh, on the previous uh, one if we won the other semi-final. So 2816. And in fact, uh, both players are using different motherboards, same CPU, same memory from Zadek 511, but a different motherboard. Um, Chi Hui Liao is using the uh, MSI platform while uh, Jimmy Lin is on the Asus board on the right hand side. But this will be true for the first 15 minutes because after 15 minutes they will have to switch the setup to, to have an equal amount of chance. Indeed, so you see, well, once you run the benchmark, you see at a certain moment it will give out a score and that score is of course uh, depending on the processor yeah, speed that they can reach. 22. Liao bring 2822. So they're really closely matched. 2816, 2822. So the setup is exactly 53. The... They're going really fast, so like we have yeah. no time to comment. <laughs> <laughs> the setup is exactly the same as the previous um the previous semi-final. And actually I had uh, someone tell me like these two guys were watching the uh, two other the previous semi-final and taking notes on what were the yeah. settings they were using. Maybe that's something that we need to avoid, that we keep the competitors somewhere in like what a dark room or something, or we just blindfold them, that they have no clue what, what the other guys did. But it's the same, it's the same as with the extreme. Uh, you can also watch uh, on the left or on the right hand side of, of, of your opponent and then just, just check what, what, what he's doing and maybe watch even just watch his score, then you already have like an idea what, what went on. But like we said, there are like a lot of values that you can change. Usually when we do overclocking for daily setups, we just increase the multiplier. So uh, these CPUs run at 35-ish uh, stock, 35 multiplier stock, around 3,500 megahertz. And you can just increase that one until you maybe crash this bench mark and it could be that you might increase a little bit more voltage give it a little bit more voltage a little bit more juice and so it can complete the benchmark stable so the guys are using the intel extreme tuning utility this is a software available free of charge for anyone owning an intel cpus and you can uh, 
push it to the limit, you can test the stability before you go in the game. You can change the control uh, of the CPUs, you can change your memory settings as well. All this from within the software. This is the software we are using today. We're using the benchmark. So basically a benchmark is just the same workload over and over again. And the, 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 the goal of this uh, benchmark is to get the highest score as possible. Indeed, that, that's all you need to do is like cross the finish line first and then get the highest score done. What we will do is like after the 15 minutes, both players can like switch setups. Like we said, there's always a little bit of luck, what we call the silicon lottery. So it could be that if you buy two identical CPUs, you and your best friend, and if you want to overclock, it can be that one CPU just performs a little bit higher, can clock that little bit higher. That's what we call, yeah, a little bit luck and that's why, in fact, after 15 minutes, we do the switch. So maybe if one CPU clocks safely or stable all the time up to 4.5, the other one can only do 100 megahertz less. It's no problem because we still switch the platform. So everybody has the same fair chance to match the score of the other one. The 2822 versus 2853. I think it's about similar scores that we saw in, in the previous game. So like you said, indeed, they took notes. They got. They already have like a clue of, of, of how the setups perform, so they're not like totally starting from from zero here. The main the main purpose here is to push your maxi to your system to the maximum. You want it to be as powerful as you can within the same limitation. So today they're using an all-in-one water cooling solution, the 360 uh, all-in-one. They're using the core Intel Core i7 6950X CPU. They're using the Cisonic 760 watt uh, power supply. They're using X99 motherboard, one from MSI, one from Asus, and uh, they are using the Zadac DDR4 memory. This RGB LED memory. Memories. They're using the Zadac 511 uh, SSD as well. Yeah, and we got a, a, a good remark by Fox the Swiper. Are you penalized if you literally damage the system due to over voltage or something? Well, like we said in the previous game before, there are like some safety measurements built in. So if the CPU gets too hot, it will clock down. If it's drawing too much current, it will clock down. So in fact, the system takes care of its own. It, it has like its own take care package or how should you call it? It's protecting itself from being damaged. I have the right example for that. So far in this year for the HWBot 2016 World Tour, there was more than 450 amateurs that did compete on the system. We got not a single failure in the hardware. So that means there is 480 people that tried to push as much as they can the system and it never broke. Yeah, that's a, the, the, these setups are like durable. Okay, we didn't take like the entry level motherboards. Eight uh, minutes. Eight minutes to go. Both uh, boards here on the stage are uh, the Asus, brand new Asus uh, Rampage 5 EVE Evolution 10 because the ROG, the Republic of Gamers series, uh, celebrate their 10th anniversary. And this is a special board made for it uh, fully with RGB. And uh, MSI also released the Gotline X99, a carbon edition. So both, let's say, the flagship models of, of this uh, socket, the Socket 2011 V3, supporting the brand new Intel Broadwell eCPU. They don't have any limitation in the temperature they can go. It will just kick in the limitation from the system. So you can kick the limits. Uh, you can kick the limit. Of the safety is actually uh, either by the temperature or the power you're actually drawing from the CPU. So if you push too high on the core, on the cache voltage or on the uh, on the uh, ring voltage, this will uh, create too much heat, and you can just kick in the safety for that. Yeah, it's just, like I said, the, the system just takes care of itself. And of course, if you're seeing it kick in, it means that you went a little bit too far for your cooling that you're using right now. So both setups are cooled by a thermal take 360 rad, so with three fans. So the all-in-one water coolings that you can build in if you have a case which is like big enough to, 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 to mount it in. So it's not even really high-end do-it-yourself water cooling that these guys are cooling down their setups. Of course, they're like mounted in or installed inside an enclosure so the cooling is a little bit better than when it is installed like inside a case what can i tell about this xtu indeed it's like really 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 harsh i've i'm always using it because it's a really quick test it gives you a really good idea about the stability of your setup of your overclock in fact and while if you're gaming you will see that you get like way lower temperature output which means that the xtu stressing tool is really 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 stressing the cores so while gaming it will give like a lower temperature output which means 
the stress on the CPU is lower. So if it survives, let's say it's, it's stable in this benchmark, it will be rock stable as well for gaming. That was a discussion on the live chat here on Twitch. Why does Intel does not test the CPUs and just uh, no give the best one? Then that's it. The, you have to understand that for every CPU you make, they are sold at factory setting. So factory setting is something that will guarantee to you that it will be working. Uh, what we are doing here is going way above the factory settings and the factory uh, you know, specification of this specific CPU. Uh, there is no way they can test so high that what we are doing here um, there will always be a little bit of margin in between the different cpus as you said any kind of hardware will be produced the same will slightly behave differently that's the margin of error that everyone have and when we go so high for, for the amateur this is pretty close but for the extreme guys it could be maybe 50 megahertz um, dependence and that can change a lot of things even though you can always get into the, the frequency is not just the one thing you need to dial in all the settings to make sure that you get the most performances the goal of overclocking is to get more performances out you don't care if you have higher or lower frequencies as long as you have more power yeah indeed and that's that's what it's all about it's like we say like many people buy like uh, the the skylake you just call it that uh, previous generation the mainstream generation of intel 6600k and 6700k the i7 won the latter one the K skew means it, the multiplier is unlocked. These CPUs are made for overclocking. Okay, you can say I will buy the fastest Intel CPU, but why leave the, the extra performance untouched? Just, just use it. it it's, it's there, it's available, and it's still safe if you don't go bog wild on voltages and, and stuff like that. But like we said, there are safety things built in inside the motherboard. Uh, for example, Four the motherboard minutes. will... Four minutes to go and we're not seeing like that many score improvements still 28 22 for chiao and jimmy lin 28 53. as you can see the benchmark is taking sometimes this is working hard on the system to make sure that the calculation is always jimmy, the same 28 78 for jimmy so, increasing his lead 28 78 and we've yeah, seen it at 28 35 35 for chiao so both overclockers if we can call them or amateur overclockers increasing their performance but we are seeing that let's say the blue setup if we can call it or the setup on the left of the stage is the fastest one so that cpu is clocking a little bit better is that unfair maybe yeah but this is why we will switch after 15 minutes so Chow everyone has a chance at actually yeah. uh, making this so you have to be good on the best system and the one that is actually it's, it's not it's not worse it's just behave differently right maybe it needs more volts maybe it needs uh, more uh, more tuning on the on the settings it's just that the system have very similar performances there's just a few points difference this is something you can't even see if you don't do the benchmark so uh, we will see which one how can, here. we will see how can the guys tune in each of the system to the maximum so Chia is not giving in, he's still uh, increasing his points, 2841 now. You see it's only small increases because both guys know that the CPUs top out around 4.5 gigahertz. So that's almost 1 gigahertz over stock, which is like really, really, really impressive already. It's like we say, 10% is usually there. And usually you can get like maybe a little bit less without any voltage increase. But overclocking is not always about just pumping volts, it's just like finding a good... Let's balance, say, hey, it's balance, a balance. Yeah, a balance between speed, voltage that you set, and temperature. So again, there was a question, Truthman, about the cooling they used, their thermal take. I don't know exactly. Extreme version 3.0 all-in-one solutions. So it's just an all-in-one water cooling solution yeah, that uh, you can 28 use on this. 2847. 2847 for Chia. So still, yeah, grabbing them extra points and these points could be yeah crucial in fact if he takes the win yes or no 2847 is actually the maximum score we saw on the red setup earlier today yeah indeed and the same for the blue so we do actually have these two people that maxed out the system as the previous semi-final so these are the maximum the system could do they have to dial in some other settings maybe we'll see them going a little bit more touching the uh, the base clock ratio or, or going touching the memory settings who knows yeah indeed and there was a question from free beer 187 why don't they use liquid nitrogen for cooling well that's for the extreme guys you have to think 
These Jimmy people were... 28, 91. Whoa, yeah, man. He's nailing it. Jimmy is going hard now. 28, 91. So uh, beating the best score on the blue setup of, uh, let's say, the first show-off. But to go back again to the extreme uh, cooling, so these people didn't... Maybe didn't know exactly how overclocked were. They got like a 30-minute tutorial by some of the coolaller.com guys uh, over the days, and they were allowed to, let's say, experiment on the on the these high-end platforms during the entire week here at Computex. Really awesome that they can like really, let's say, squeeze out already like the last drop of megahertz of of, of these CPUs. This is just the amateurs, the extreme guys. The final and the bronze final will be up next, I think. And that's maybe a little bit more spectacular to watch. And they will also run maybe a different benchmark than this one, but maybe a little bit more animations going on because we only here see what we're seeing at this moment. So Jimmy, 28.59 for sure. 28.59, that's also a better score than uh, the previous game. Right before the end. Up. So both competitors, in fact, beating the scores of the the previous amateur overclockers that were on stage. So uh, these guys uh, have taken notes and maybe the other ones did the same now. They quickly took maybe a, a picture of because we have like these two huge screens uh, near the stage and they just maybe took a picture with a smartphone of the settings and then just <laughs> tried to dial it in uh, later on. So what will happen now, Ligoft, is that uh, the two overclockers will switch place, so they will have an equal chance on each of the systems. We know that the blue setup is actually performing a little bit higher than the red setup. The reason is it depends a lot on the different settings at this level uh, of overclocking. This is for the amateur. They just use regular coding solution like you guys could use at home. And uh, after this match, we'll have uh, either the bronze final for the extreme guys with the LN2 or the amateur final. We'll have to to, uh, to check on the, on the on the time schedule for that but what is important for you guys to understand is what is being done here today live right now is amateur overclocking they don't use the queen action they use the same system you could use at home actually if you have uh, an intel uh, cpu at home you could install the intel extreme tuning utility and go into the settings to you know get more performances out better games uh, more responsiveness everything that you want to you know everything you want to try out actually you should try it out because it's quite addictive yeah it's addictive and it's like we said it can give like a substantial boost over over what you're running and it sometimes it can even increase the lifespan of your setup there are still people like running on, on maybe sandy bridge 2500 2600k with a small overclock and that gets still way more than enough performance for gaming just because they, they did like a 500 to 600 megahertz overclock so the goal here is to reach the highest performance you can with the system within the limitation on a specific benchmark. Uh, for those of you guys that doesn't know what a benchmark is, a benchmark is like a Formula 1 track or a level in a game. It's always the same. It's always the same workload. Depending on what you do on it, you have to be the fastest or you have to get the most point on it. Yeah. So how can you stay cold with all the CPU heat? Well, luckily this place is air conditioned. Otherwise, we would be melting, I think, in Taipei. And even with the air conditioning, it's actually <laughs> a little bit hot here. Yeah, indeed. My dearly goofed, uh, we have seen that the first leg of this uh, 15 minutes have been done. We are just waiting for the second uh, leg of it. Uh, the second leg will uh, add up the score and the total, uh, the ads. Uh, so the two score will add up and then we'll have the final score. This is uh, defining the ranking for, for the amateurs. We try to know who in Shia or Jimmy will go to the amateur final for the HWS 2016 Asia amateur final. For the finals for these amateurs, do we keep the same setups or do we switch the setups again? I think we will keep the same setup. They will have to go deep because they could match exactly the same score, right? And even so everyone have the same chance. Yes. We are ready to go. We start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good luck. So we're off again. Both players straight inside the tuning utility and pushing them settings. But it's fun to see. We are seeing this more and more that people start to take notes, take pictures of, and, and it's it's really evolved, I think, from all the the world tour stops that you witnessed, didn't you, Truffman? 
indeed and yeah, this is uh, so professional from them even at this amateur level i think they you know they they, they got nicely trained by the guys at cool Allo that were doing the workshop yeah, there's all uh, the, the 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 normal let's say fanboying thing is already going on on Twitch between Intel and AMD and, and guys, use whatever you can, use whatever your budget allows you to. If you prefer the red team, for for GPU green team, who cares, man? If you have fun, that's the most important thing. And it's they not... can all be overclocked. That's the whole point. You yeah. can overclock any of these. It's no problem, man. You can't afford this one or you just prefer to have that one don't worry if it powers your gaming if it powers your encoding all fine so the guys are ready to run their first benchmark knowing all the settings changing multipliers changing the voltages and we're just waiting for the first course to pop up you can see these guys have really done their homework they're like Probably they didn't sleep this night and just were running over the settings again. What can I do? And maybe they installed the Xtreme, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility at home to maybe just get acquainted again with the settings and maybe try what, what's going on. So 28.59 versus 28.91. Both competitors were better on, let's say, each platform than the previous competitors. So these guys might get a little worried as well. Where did they get or where did they unleash the extra performance? So we're seeing the stage now. Shua on the left, Jimmy Lin on the right, Christian Ney or Model in the middle. But the XU benchmark takes about 45 seconds on this system. It's much, much faster. So the fastest CPU, the fastest the benchmark is. Yeah, and indeed, the XTU is like really dependent on, on CPU speed. You need 2841. 2841 for Jimmy Lin. So already pretty pretty close to uh, Charles' uh, first score, 2859, which he achieved after a lot of tweaking. And Jimmy Lin just dialing in, setting his first score, and already like really, really, really close to the score of the other one. And we have Wox Rocks on the live chat cheering for the guy in the middle. Sadly, the guy in the middle is not so enthusiastic, is he? He doesn't dance smiles once in a while but you really have to be quick to he catch it on camera. He's there as a referee right? You have to make sure that you can catch all the scores to be sure that everything is right and not have to rerun so that's what we call the rerun is when um, you do a score but there's something wrong with it so you have to make sure you can redo that one again. Yeah true Jimmy Lin's still running Chow is tweaking and tuning. Five thousand seven hundred thirty-two is the total score for Jimmy Lin. So we do just an uh, addition of the previous score and the new score he got. So uh, once Chow gets his second score in, we will have like an idea how close the game will be again. Jimmy running. Uh, we can see that Jimmy Lin is at twenty-eight forty-one on the same setup just before Xia was at twenty-eight fifty-nine. There's about eighteen points uh, more in room that he can actually go and try to fight with to have the best score on this specific setup. Should be good. Come on, come on, let's see a score. 28-41. So not good enough. So Chao yeah, getting his... 22 getting his first score in on the new setup 28 22 so still a lot of work to do he should be able to match 28 91 so of course now that we know uh, the setup and what they can do it's easy to compare to know if they are doing better on exactly the same system so Shia had, uh, had one of the system in the beginning and uh, Jimmy is using it now and is just 18 point away. The system that Jimmy Lin was using just before was 8, uh, 2891 and now Xia is using it's 2822. There's still a, a good margin for improvement for him so he knows that the platform can do at least that. Chao is rebooting. 2853 for Jimmy. We're getting close to Chao's score on, that, on the same setup so 2853 only 6 points from the best score done on the platform. They are slowly building up their score. And that's that's one of the strategies we see as well with the extreme overclockers. They put a score and they 
no build up from that one. This is very important to do it step by step to know exactly where it will break or crash and to start again without using that settings again. And we see over 63 points that uh, differ between both competitors. So Chow really needs to, to match up to Jimmy's score and even should like be breaching like 2900-ish to get like to claim the win for the for the final, to get into the final. So maybe too we need to link the people on Twitch for the giveaway. So we can get them hooked on what overclocking is all about and what we can do for you. You mean 2866? So slowly improving his score, uh, getting into Shia uh, ranking now. But he's, he, Jimmy is in the lead uh, overall because of his very strong first uh, first leg of this match. You have to keep on, on pushing it to make sure you can beat the uh, the platform, uh, the, 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 the score on this platform. This is going to be important because they will be reusing the same system for the final. So if he knows he can push that system straight to if he can push that system far further than any of the other guys he have an edge for the final yeah and i think uh, indeed uh, jimmy is doing way better so he's setting the highest scores on both platforms at this moment so that guy is really like maybe could be the new generation of overclocking here from taipei from taiwan and this is what we have seen from last year last year and at the poitiers event there was like orion 24 already and, and a few other french guys that yeah, we're, we're overclocking for their first time, and these guys are doing extreme liquid yeah, nitrogen cooling. Yeah, 59. Chow coming back, 28.59, but that's still uh, not good enough. We need to see more from the guy if he wants to get into the finals. 5,718 versus 5,757. Jimmy still in the lead, and I think really he's got it in the bag, Truth. I think he really has got it in the bag because that guy is like setting better and better scores each time again. And yeah, he's the fastest on, on both setups. Well, we, I think we have to say, Shia, that the goal was not to do the exact same score on the two different platforms. <laughs> we should give him like a prize for that one, a free t shirt or something. <laughs> The, the the winner of this match will access the final. Um, the, the, so the first the the place for the first and Seven second minutes. will be decided in the in the final. Um, the third place will be decided on the total amount of points. So that means if uh, they manage to have like higher point than the two others, uh, that will be the third one. Yeah, and the people at Twitch are giving like pointers, but sadly, guys, they can't see and maybe can. can text him or something but i don't think it's allowed to use your smartphone during the event you just have to keep focused on the keyboard and let the setup run dial it in you have been tutored like for 30 minutes you had your yeah you just time. have two times 15 minutes this is super super tight and you don't have the time to actually check your facebook and see what's going on some overclockers can some extreme overclockers but you never know but it will be interesting for the for the game if chow at least could match like jimmy's score of 2891 on the same setup so 5,718 for the red, 5,757 for the blue team. Oh, 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 we have a crash on the red team. Oh, we didn't oh, see man. the blue screen, sadly. Too so bad. We, switch we... to Jimmy on the blue mm -hmm. team. He's adjusting the cash voltage to 1.27 volts. So yeah, and he really looked for the, the max CPU frequency and now he's trying to run the cash a little bit higher to get maybe again. Maybe he could go uh, close to his score on, on the other setup. He's not that far away. You can see the tension that people are thinking like, what is the other one doing? Is he getting a better score? You don't, really don't have a clue when you're on stage, especially when you're sitting down. If like the extreme guys, they're like standing up and they can like have a quick peep at the, at the, other, at the other platform. But these guys are like, mm, I really need to focus now what's going on here. No time what the other one does, I just have to Im continue to increase my scores. So oh, here we go, Jimmy is pushing to 4.4 GHz. Here the Intel Core i7 6950X. There is 5 minutes left in this second leg of the second semi-final to know who will go against the uh, first winner, Lan Tseuyin, in the first semi-final of the amateur.
Yeah, and KGB operative made a, a clever remark. Why not drag all the sliders to the max? Well, yeah, that's maybe one way of approaching things. But usually, if you like pump massive, massive voltages and stuff like that, it will overheat and and it will it, yeah run at a lower frequency to just protect itself. So uh, that's not the way to approach overclocking. Overclocking is small steps, go gently towards the right, small increments, and just get it clocking better and better. There are people cheering for Jimmy on the live chat. Let us know who is cheering, cheering for Jimmy and who is cheering for Chia. Let us do a big round of applause for them, like the two contestants here. Go for it. Continue, continue. Push it, push it to the maximum. Keep pushing it, you know. We're approaching the four-minute mark now. Jimmy Lin still comfortably in the lead. Chia really needs to get, get at least 40 points more to be somewhere in the game. He really needs to put pressure on Jimmy because he's... And Chao is trailing him, trailing him. We really need to get better performance on the setup on the left. So we are here at the HWBot World Tour 2016 in Taipei during the Computex and we are seeing the two amateurs competing on the latest Intel Core i7-6950X CPU. And it is like you said, uh, the CPU architecture was just released uh, last Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the A, lifted the NDA as they call it. And yeah, Broadwell E is here for the desktop platform, 10 cores of crushing power at your disposal. So in fact, desktop performance that we could only find previously in, in server market. So normally CPUs, the Xeon CPUs, which are not like being bought by, by let's say any mortal being like ourselves. We just used to stick to the normal desktop versions. But yeah, 10 core crunchers are here, man. 5,780 still for Chia and Jimmy Lin, 5,757. Still pushing hard, still trying to, let's say, push the score, get a little bit more to warrant his ticket to get into the show off in the final show off. You can see the, the setup, so uh, the thermal take, all-in-one cooler, the RGB fancy thing which is going on lately with all mainboard manufacturers. Zedek 511 memory, SSD, and we have the MSI X99 Carbon Godlike Edition and the Asus Rampage 5 10th Anniversary Evo 10 on display here. And the guys are both maxing out the CPUs quite well. Really, really solid performance by, by both players, but Jimmy, Jimmy has, has the edge here. And they are all using the uh, latest uh, power supply from Seasonic, the 760 watt uh, platinum power supply. Indeed. As we can see, it's very tight for them, like 57, 18 point against 57, 57 point. Uh, we have Chia that till, still did not manage to do a better score than the one he had just before. He's matching the exact same score on the two systems. Maybe he's using the exact same setting as well. You have to adapt on the uh, on. On the setting, on the set, you have to adapt the settings on the system you are using to you know to to find the right difference to um to, to, the right settings to have this extra point when you want to overclock like this. Indeed, it's it's all about maxing out everything. It's the same if you have like a race car and you like used to racing it like day in day out, and they put you in another car. You also have to find the one limits minute. again. So less than one minute to go. Five thousand seven hundred eighty for Chia, not improving. Jimmy Lin also now remaining stable not able to let's say improve a score of 2866 making up for the total of 5757 points there's 40 seconds left in this uh, in this second semi-final we will see who will go to the final of the hwbot world series 2016 for amateur it's too bad for you truthman with the brothel e we don't see that many blue screens with the amateurs yeah. it's like really disappointing in fact <laughs> I'm not disappointed. I'm. I just think I have to find something else to yell at. <laughs> Probably the extreme guys will make up for you then. I can't wait to see the the bronze final and the final for the extreme as well. Ten, yeah. nine, eight, seven, six. Final stages. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up.
Time's up. Jimmy Lim has it at the back, but maybe he can still increase his score. His benchmark was still running before the final in the final second, so we are allowing to complete this run, and uh, maybe he can even top it and, and get a better score than 28.66. I think some of the extreme overclockers should get worried. If this guy gets seriously into overclocking, I think we have like a good good one. Ah, he came close. 28.59. Not good enough, but at least he assured his ticket to go into the final. Congratulations, man. Congratulations to Jimmy Dean. He is accessing the final of the HWBOT World Series for Amateur. And this will be in the next few minutes. Uh, my dear League of what did you thought about this one versus one game by Total Amateur? Yeah, in fact, the, the first one was already impressive. And like you said, second participant of Match of participants took notes and it, it paid off both setting like new high scores for both platforms. But Jimmy Lin, yeah, he, he just seems to have the edge and, and, and has the the proper way of approaching things and just increasing everything slowly and gently and just, yeah, he snatched the win. So I think it's DS10 versus Jimmy Lin, if I'm right. And that will be the final of the amateur that will be streamed live here on Twitch on Overclocking TV channel. We will be able to find all that. Let's recap what we had. We had the first semi-final between Lens Zayin and DS that made 57.25 against 57.01. Then we just finished the second semi-final between Shia and Jimmy. Shia is 57.18 uh, in total point while Jimmy Lin was 57.57. Jimmy Lin is actually the leader of this competition he is the man to, um, to to beat and he was one of the guys to achieve the best score on one of the system that will be interesting to see if he will, will reuse the exact same settings for his first 15 minutes of the match and just try to push it as much as he can for the second one we already know who is the third person in this ranking because the third person is decided by the total amount of points. So if you go in the ranking, fourth is DS. And third place, we have Shia Yui Yao. So Shia will go back home with uh, some good prizes that will be awarded in the award ceremony in the next uh, in the next few hours. We still have a few matches still upcoming here on the Overclocking TV channel on Twitch. We are... Here in direct from Taipei, Taiwan, this is the Computex. This is the last day of the biggest trade show about computer hardware. Uh, you, what we are watching is an overclocking competition. In the next few minutes, we will have the Extreme Overclocker, the bronze final of the Extreme Overclocker, a fully European final between Dan Cop, currently number one overclocker in the world against Raccoon, one of his fellow contestants. We can't wait to see that match, man. That will be interesting to, uh, to see how the guys can push it to the maximum. Yeah, indeed, it's like current number one. Everybody wants to beat the number one. It doesn't matter if you're Formula One driver or, or best football player or whatever sport you like. It's always an honor to go head to head to such a, let's say, important or, or person like like Daniel Shear, aka Dan Cop. So yeah, Raccoon, I think he will be a little bit more nervous than 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 normal. We will see what's going on. Don't forget, guys, for that for this weekend we will have a special giveaway on our settings on our set. Um, website overclocking-tv.com forward slash raffle you can win a Zadak 511 SSD one of the 6950X CPU a PSU uh, from Seasonic the P1050 and one of the unique uh, unit of the Streetcom BC1 bench table, one of the openbenchtable.com project. If you did not know what this is, you should go check it out at openbenchtable.com and chip in to maybe have early access to this awesome new open frame uh, case. Thank you, Ligoft. I will see you in the next few minutes for the first uh, bronze final of this HWBOT World Series. Okay, man. See you there.